so update for end of the week uh, week 37 right is that what we're on for the year out of 52 um, I got my camera in a different spot because my driver's seat's all covered up with junk um, I'm trying to install my cameras right now I'm in the Dodge City Petro anybody around come on by you know look for me drop trailer, uh, a drop, what is that, a Conestoga? I don't know, it's one of the skateboards with a, the wooden side inserts and a tarp load, if there's ever, anything even on it. Um, so week ending for last week, I know it's only Sunday, but I've already dropped my last load for the week. I plan on taking the 34 here. Uh, I was gonna do that and get my inspection done and get my laundry done and do other things. So I'm working on the 34. I'll be working on the laundry probably in the morning since I have all day tomorrow to sit. Um, picking my load up sometime on Tuesday and delivering it on Wednesday for the start of next week. Last week total numbers 37, 84, 97 on 2,770 miles. And I know that's not that good. It's about a buck 37. But if you take off the fact that uh, 182 miles I drove to Beach Island and uh, got shot down. They didn't need it. Uh, production line was down, broken. Um, they were welding a piece on, supposedly. So I might have said it in the last video if I made the last video on at the at the end of last week. I think I don't know if I did or not. But yeah. Um, and if you take off the mileage for that and the extra 40 miles or so I added to get here, because the um, TA and closer to where I'm picking up at is had really bad reputation with tires and stuff. Said it took them four hours to change one tire. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to sit here for an inspection doing that. And uh, <laughs> I could have rolled further back up. What's the point, really? I don't know. I didn't feel like doing it. <coughs> Excuse me. I already decided I was gonna stop here and stay here, and uh, that camera's in a bad spot. I hate looking up at this camera. Um, so yeah, it would have been about a buck fifty a mile, but you know, my load canceled. I booked a few out, um, or four, and then the last load out canceled. Uh, well, it got pulled from me. I don't know why. I'm assuming, uh, well, one can only assume why, right? I'm not gonna assume because you know you know what that does and if you don't you better go back to school because uh, I don't say those words no more um, yeah so I'm putting the camera in uh, I forgot how to power it up but you know I got my hot wires here I actually got them wired in so when I get done checking this and making sure the camera is where I want it to be I still haven't decided on the one on each side or the one in the middle uh, the problem I'm having is the wiring for the middle, I'm going to have to run it through the CB hole and this piece looks like it is riveted on and even if it isn't, I can't get in there. Um, the screws look really tight and it's a, it's probably a day long job. I'm not looking to spend a day doing this, I just want to wire this thing rather quickly and run my cable to the rear of my truck and then once I got that part done, um, I can finish hooking the cameras up and um, putting them, man I sure do say um a lot on this, <laughs> that's not good air time, don't you people know anything, oh my god, so yeah the, the dude, uh, uh, what is his name, I keep conversing with him after every video, man I'm so bad with names. <laughs> so anyway uh, he said he said he got one a smaller version uh, he didn't get the joint Elgo he got some other brand name uh, I checked my last video from week 36 35 he got a smaller version that he seems to like I'm gonna 
I'm just gonna keep plugging with this thing and get it to work and find me an SD card. I did not post that. I did. I did. Uh, when I got the SD card, I got one from Walmart at the store itself, and I know their little game. If it doesn't sell a lot, they're not going to keep them in stock a lot of the time. Walmart's getting really shabby about a lot of the things they do. I don't know if any of y'all have noticed that in the last couple of years, but they don't sell a lot of the supersize SD cards anymore because nothing uses them. So I figured I could get away with a 128 gig adapter SD card with the micro SD into the big fat thing. Yeah, that didn't happen. So I bought a $20 card with the adapter kit and it did not work, needless to say. So I got lucky and parked at a pilot that had a Walmart directly across the street from it. So I ran over there, got some groceries, got a rotisserie chicken, got a few other things. Uh, stock up the truck for my last week and a half out until we go and try and put something down on the house with a uh, land, some land equity and a little bit of money. I'll tell you how that goes later on. I know it's going to be rough due to the fact that I just started doing this. And they say it'll be easier if you to get a house when you're doing self self-employed stuff if you've been in the business for a while, you have all your paperwork and you stayed within the same boundaries of a business. Now, I've been in logistics for 3 decades now. I was with Frito for 15. Uh, I was in warehousing for a year before I moved there to that company. And then before I moved down to where I'm at now, I was with, well, I, I've just been in warehousing logistics for years, decades. So I, I know the ins and outs of the business. It's just not this side of the business that I knew that much of. Although I've been told I'm doing fairly well at it right now and we'll end up getting better because I mean heck if I'm doing this good already I, I can't really say that I'm gonna end up doing bad later on right that's what y'all say <laughs> I like to think I'll do better well I know I'll do better I'm not worried about that part one way or another I'll get what I need so I've also looked into starting to do some research on investing the money that I'm saving so stay tuned for that uh, I might have some little tips on that um, making your money work for you um, I might make a video on that once I get I, I try to stream many sources of data into my brain and uh, only about 20% of it sticks <laughs> I, I really don't know the percentage that sticks I, I'm good at math but the the percentage that goes in and then comes back out the other end you know it, it, uh, it's all up in the air I don't know how it works but um, I'm not a doctor or anything like that I, I probably would have done well at that too I don't know I, I don't really care I've, I've I made mistakes in my life ended up where I'm at now with no degree so imagine that I'm making more now than I ever did and I've only been doing this IC stuff since July. So, and yeah, I gotta pay for my own stuff. That's part of the business. That's part of being the responsible part. But uh, we're gonna power this thing up and plug my camera in and see where I wanna aim it at and see which side is best. Uh, I don't know. I might have a video later on on that. I'm not sure, but uh, you know. So booking loads. Uh, I spoke with an IC today when I was looking for an empty trailer. Uh, I knew it was going to happen because there was only two listed. I dropped off at uh, my former employer, but uh, I didn't work over here in Tennessee. Well, I'm not in Tennessee now, but. I didn't work over there at that plant in Tennessee. I worked at a different one, but uh, it showed one empty last night. I got up this morning and checked it showed two empties. Hey, I might be lucky because I'm leaving earlier than a lot of people do on Sundays. And when I got there, they checked me in and told me to go around to the yard and look for the green or blue tag on the trailer. I might get lucky. He said most people do. I guess I'm not like most people because 
I didn't get lucky. Out of the one trailer that was listed when I got back there, it wasn't even around. It's showing on the opposite side of the building where they're still unloading it or whatever. I don't know. So they sent me this facility where an IC was dropping off. I passed by it because the signage is horrible. It says go to gate three and the gate three sign is behind, you know, the gate slides open. Well, the sign's on this gate and it slides behind this gate. And it was a chain link fence, but you can't really read it at like 5.30 in the morning when it's completely dark. Not much light there. I saw it when I was pulling in after I seen him pull in behind me and I had gone straight. Luckily it was just an industrial road and I could turn right around. I was bobtailing too, so you know, looking for that empty. We got there and she said, no go. We need more empties. Why don't you tell them that? I'm like, I, I, people, we can't communicate that. If, if you need more empties, you need to call them people up there yourself and tell them because it's, I don't have a microphone where I'm talking to dispatch office. It doesn't work like that. Uh, so they sent me to a DC around the corner. That's one of our good customers that uh, <laughs> I passed on the way there. I mean, why didn't you just send me there? You, your, your customer needs this size trailer pool. Well, I can see where the miscommunication is if you think about it, because if you're supposed to have a four trailer pool, you have six trailers listed. That means you have at least two extra. You don't tell your trailer pool people that you have already loaded all the trailers because, you know, you got loads going out of there, but you didn't put trailer numbers associated with the loads. So they're not going to know that the trailers are loaded and just sitting there. So there's a lack of communication. I mean, that's one of the issues in this industry. There's a lack of communication between the shipper and the broker and the driver, you know? It, it's all, if, if there was a better form of communication that, I mean, if, if they all communicated better, it would work out a lot. That's why I think, you know, these smaller companies have it a little bit easier with contract freight than we do because we're such a large company that, uh, like, for instance, what I just ran into. I mean, you got a six trailer pool, you only need four. You got a four trailer pool, you got six showing empty, and you've loaded every single one of them, but you didn't call, or our overnight is so bad, you did call, because I, that's happened too. I mean, they've updated it, but nobody contacted, nobody fed the information further down the line, because, I mean, I had one the other day where overnight should have taken care of it and he said I need a pickup number it didn't match up of course this guy was new and didn't know that he was punching in the trailer I had on my rear end that was empty instead of just punching in the number so it wasn't associating the pickup number with that trailer that I had because that's not the trailer the pickup number was on that was a waste of 30 minutes too but so Overnight needs to communicate better with feeding information down because the minute I asked for a pickup number Well, not the minute, but you know within 10 minutes they sent me a message back saying This is the only number we have and this is the trailer associated with it because the minute that They saw that I need that information They sent it on down the line and said well this trailer number is associated with it either overnight needs to get with a program or they need to make a program better that will update the information on the fly. Yeah, that's something that needs to be addressed with them guys. Tell them, like, yeah, right. Like, they're going to do that. Tell them that. I mean, hey, you know, change it to where, change the program. You just need a few key things in there. If this, then that. Those of you who don't know what ITTT is, uh, there's an app called ITTT. It will, and I don't know how functional it is now, if it's still supported, but I know about three, four years ago, maybe longer, when I was listening to a tech guy show, uh, Leo Laporte, the tech guy podcast, um, or it was the Twit Network, the, uh, the other guys that were on the Android Network, 
when I used to root phones. Um, there's an app called ITTT, if this then that. And what it does is like, basically, and I know Android, uh, Google does this now, the smart home stuff does this, where your phone will say, if I'm within a certain radius of my house, then turn on the thermostat to 68 degrees or whatever. That's basically what ITTT is. Um, but that's what needs to be done. I mean, if this, then that. If, if this receives an update with a trailer, then that needs to be fed down the line. Do it. God. You know, it's funny how a technological world is so more complicated than I swear it's more complicated than things that you used to do before all this. I mean, there's less paper, less trees dying, even though we're still killing them and stealing all our oxygen and causing the global warming and, and so on. And, and, uh, <laughs> there's so many things that are just ridiculous, like green cars. There's no such thing as a green car. Okay, you plug your car in. Oh, I'm not getting gas, I'm using batteries. Where does the power come that charges your batteries? Fossil fuel. Where does oil come from? Fossil fuel. It's not green. Nothing is green except tree leaves before autumn. I mean, come on, and grass before fall. Or later on, you know, like when winter comes along and kills it or your car sits over it. You know, money, some money is green, not all money. And it's not really that green either. Some of our trucks are green. <laughs> and, and you can't get green. And look, I'm going off on a tangent here. This isn't even what I'm saying. This is not trucking related. Sorry, guys. The other thing is, you know, when I worked for FLNA, um, Major corporations pay a set amount of money to say that they are green because I'll, I'll pay you a million dollars. It's a it's hard to explain for me because I, I know where where it is, but it's not whatever. It's not trucking related, so screw it. I'm not talking about that. Okay, so I still haven't got my CB yet. Uh, I think I said that already on the last video. I'm not worried about that. I'm just trying to hook these cameras up and then I'm going to, I don't know, fix me some lunch or dinner, depending on how long this takes, because I'm gonna sit in here until I hook this thing up and run some wires. Um, my truck's a mess right now. Yeah, my bunk's hooked up, jacked up, because I, I'm, I'm uh... <laughs> But I'm gonna get me a fan for the back because the roof, it's hot as crap above like I'm 6'1 so once you get about right here it's nice and warm up top there was a guy who had a, a PVC pipe he put hooked up to that vent that's on the bottom because these P4s there's no vent up on the top bunk like there was on the 15 I had you got a little bit of vent right there near your controls which doesn't really blow out that much and this thing on the bottom that blows out like crazy so he took a thermometer like I got that got a handheld trigger measuring thing and he ran a PVC pipe from down and had it going straight up and um, within 10 minutes the temperature I think it was actually five minutes but the temperature in the whole cab was even at like I don't know 61 or 65 or something like that so because he measured it coming out and then he measured up top and it was a good almost 15 to 20 degree difference and then when he did that and hooked the pipe up it changed dramatically. The only problem with that is tripping over that pipe. If I did that, well, couldn't, I don't know. I don't know, man. Some of these guys use a fan. I think I'll just use a fan and see how that works because I don't want a pipe in my way. I want to be able to move it out of the way. And uh, it's, I already got a ladder that I smacked my head on when I first got in here and that hurt like crap and I'm rambling again as usual so you know sorry about that that's just what I do um, 
But yeah, as far as money advice, investing and stuff, I'll figure something out. I'm, I got this one guy that was in trucking and he had a Corvette show and then he got rid of his Corvettes and he had a garage door business or something like that and then he was going to get into trucking and he dropped out. I had, I had originally watched part of one of his videos for like five minutes which said, oh, I'm getting out of trucking and after that I wasn't interested because I'm, I'm interested in trucking videos because I want to know what I need to do. So now he's got videos on how he became a millionaire because he's 43 years old and retired. Man, I screwed my life up. I'm 50 years old and I'm nowhere near retirement. I gotta go 10 more years before I can retire. So, but yeah, I got a three year, a five year, a 10 year plan. And uh, there's one of the things I was looking at was investments on um, pure marketing or something like that, where you can drop a minimum of $1,000, you'll get like a 5% interest return on your investment. So you get a good ROI. It's hard to get one. There's not a lot of places that give you a good percentage on your ROI. But, uh, I mean, imagine if you get a 5% return on investment every week, you could have a million dollars within four to five years. Now, I don't see that happening. You can't do it like every week because there's no easy money like that. But uh, if I had a million dollars, I'd be making a lot. But it ain't all about the money. I'm just trying to get it to where me and the wife are comfortable and then we can help out our community and numerous other things. So, I don't know. Rambling, rambling mouth. That's what I got. Sorry if y'all uh, got bored with this video, but uh, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here. So, y'all keep the left door closed and keep the hammer down.